Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hey everyone, Mark Stephen Pooler here today and welcome to Brilliance Business, my first episode. So I'm so, so excited. Conversations with leading experts in business and we have some wonderful wonderful guests coming on to the show over the coming weeks. So join us on Thursdays, 7am Pacific, 10am Eastern and 3pm UK. And also I will be doing regular Sundays as well. Before I get started today, I just want to give a shout out to our official main sponsor of the show, Craig Shelley Beverly Hills Luxury Watches and Fine Jewellery at craigshelley.com. So let's get started with the show. Today we have Sunil Tulsiani. Sunil is a personal friend who I have met in Toronto. We have had lunch together. We've done lots of business collaboration together. Sunil is a really successful real estate investor, mentor. He is a number one best-selling author, an international speaker, and he puts on the most incredible events with some of the biggest names. Sunil, welcome to Brilliance Business. Thank you, Mark, and uh, please keep going. You are doing so good, telling you know I, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm I'm also happy that I understand this is your first episode uh, of uh, this beautiful uh, business show, and I'm really glad that I'm here uh, for us to be able to do that. Uh, I, I'm truly happy that you're doing this to to actually help a lot of people and bring on the experts, so then other people can be inspired, especially during these COVID-19 times. It's a pleasure to have you, Sunil. I'm honoured to call you a friend. I really want to dig deep into your life today. Mm. You've just had the most amazing introduction and people will think, wow, he has made it. But it hasn't always been that way, Sunil. So can you share with our listeners, our viewers, some of the challenges <clears throat> that you have faced and share your past to what got you to where you are today? Well, it's uh, it's very simple for me because I grew up in, uh, I was born in India and then brought up in Toronto. And when we were in India, we would live in a 200 square feet room. Uh, and, and my mom, dad, three of us, so five of us will live in one room. And that was our bedroom. That was our living room. That was our kitchen. And then we would share a washroom with the landlord. And then they had the opportunity to go to the washroom first. And so we brought up with the idea of that the money is scarcity, uh, you know, you can't afford anything. Um, and, and, and also brought up, brought up with the idea that money is bad, uh, money is root of all evil. And, all, and yet we struggled all our lives. And then in 1981, uh, we uh, came to Canada when I was about 13 years old. And from there, uh, in 1990, I became a police officer. And I, from being a uniform officer, I became a police detective. Then I became a police negotiator and finally a platoon commander. And what happened was one day my wife came to me. So this is about 13th year of my policing. And my wife came, came to me and said, we're going to have a divorce. And uh, as a police officer, there's a lot of divorces in, um, uh, in, in that profession. Now, sometimes the divorces are needed and, and then they're fine. And others, in this case, basically what she said to me was, look, we don't, you know, you don't spend time with us. You're not there. Even when you're here, you're not here. And, and I just didn't, I mean, we fought a lot for the last two years. And finally, I looked around all my friends, my buddies who are police officers. And while I was uh, enjoying the police force and enjoying what my profession was, that point was, am I going to, what is more important, profession? or your family. And I used to tell people my family is the most important part. But I've realized now um, that I used to say one thing, 
but act like my profession was more important because I would just, you know, work 12, 14, 18 hours a day, sometimes days and nights. And basically that was my, by action, I was saying that was more important. So I decided to actually um, give up the profession and went and, and, and came into a business. And what happened was I took a leave of absence uh, and it was a very, very tough thing to do because what happened was uh, you don't get a leave of absence for one year. And that's what I asked for, one year leave of absence. So the history of the uh, police force that I worked for in Canada, uh, no one had come to them and said, you know, uh, allow me to go out and look for some other business or profession. And if I don't, if it doesn't work out after one year, I want my not only job back, but I want my position back. And I like to do that as, as well. And everybody, Mark, everybody said, yes, yeah, crazy. That's a stupid thing to do. You know, when no one would agree to it, everybody disagreed with me, including my supervisors. And what really happened was I was the pioneer for that because if you're ill or something else happened, that's different. But so I did take a unpaid leave of absence and I, would, I was uh, because I was scared. I was scared because every two weeks I was getting that paycheck and I did not want to lose that paycheck. And, uh, and so I was really scared to give up this secure job. And, um, and what is interesting is that I was a shy guy. I was never a public speaker. If you asked me to stand up in front of 20 people for a minute, it would have been like meltdown for me. I would never do any of that stuff. I was really bad student and growing up in schools. Uh, I, I was not a, you know, I was not good in English. I was not good in uh, most of the things. So I was not a good student. Uh, and my finally, my parents got used to the idea and they would just say, hey, did you just pass? Did you at least pass? Just tell us you passed. And, and so, so what I want to say to you is all those things that came to us, like, which is you're not going to amount to anything. Uh, you know, money's root of all evil and don't have too much money. Don't have this. And those are the affirmations that we got. And, and, and one day, the, one of the affirmations I got was, if you don't study, you're going to beg on streets. And, and these are some of the things that are happening. And, and there were fights at home with mom and dad and our relatives because of money. And yet money was seen as a bad thing. So as a, as a uh, police officer, I said, I don't want to get a divorce because I have, we have two children. And this was when... Um, my daughter was approximately four years old and my son was approximately uh, 10 years old. So she was four, he was 10. And uh, what ended up happening was I took a course from a guy named Robert G. Allen in the United States and it's called Nothing Down. I paid $5,000 for that course. Of course, that was the first time in my life I would pay somebody $5,000 for a, a training or anything like that, like a, like a, like a seminar. And I did that. And of course, my, you know, I was worried about my wife and all that kind of stuff. That's what she's going to say. But what, ha what happened was that course changed my life. Uh, I mean, there was other things that I did, but that course was the pioneer in changing my life. And I ended up buying and selling 77 properties the first year alone. And I ended up making almost a million dollars. So I ended up making approximately $980,000. And Mark, what I want to say to you is this, never in my biggest dream have, would I ever guess that I would become a millionaire. Forget about millionaire in a year, but, but even like all my life, I, you know, maybe when I retire, I would have that, but, you know, but other than that, none of that was happening because I was like the old school, you go work hard, come home, save some money, put it into mutual funds and stocks, and then slowly see them grow and then drop and grow and drop. And, and, and so once I became this person, I, I would have media call me up. Like if you had called me 15 years ago when I left the police force, I would hang up on media because I didn't want to talk to media. I was a shy guy. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I, I just wanted to do my thing, take care of my family, and that was it. And so what ended up happening is because I bought and sold 77 properties and people saw it and people started, and that's when media, success magazine, television, radios, and then and that gave the birth to what people know as the largest uh, elite real estate club in North America. 
And now we have, mem- well, you're a member of my club being in London, uh, UK area. And, and, and so we have members all over the world, but we're the largest elite real estate club in North America, including the United States and Canada. And this is where we teach people how to become wealthy in real estate, entrepreneurship, business, and many other uh, things that you saw. And now, of course, I produce events, big events, like working with Kevin Hart, Grant Cardone, and Robert Kiyosaki's of the world, Robin Sharma, and Brian Tracy, and all these wonderful people that I used to look up to, and I still look up to them, but now I'm doing business with them. And so I am an example of what can happen to anybody on the planet. I'm not you know, extra special. I, I did bad in school. I, I, I'm a, an eight times best-selling author, but yet I can't spell or, or my grammar is bad. But yet I am internationally well-known as a top um, uh, number one best-selling author. And the reason I want to say that, not to brag, but I want to say that to, a lot of people come to me and say, I can't do it. It's, you know, it's, you don't know me, Sunil. I cannot do it. And I'm here to prove to you that if you focus and you have a system and you have connections and you do what the rich people do, you end up getting what the rich people get. Great words there, Sunil. I would just like to say I related a lot on some of the things you said. You didn't want to be in the police anymore, so you followed your heart, your passion, and really went for your dreams. I myself used to be a hairdresser. I had my own business as a freelance hairstylist. And some people try to talk you out of your own desires and your own dreams. So I would even have family members saying to me, you're so good at hairdressing. It's guaranteed money every month. What are you doing going around speaking for free? And I would have to say, look, I believe in myself. I know I can make something better. But people really do try to talk you out of your dreams. Also, what a big journey you were on from being so poor, sleeping in one room to moving to Canada, going into the police. So my next question would be, what skills do you use now that we were from the police? Because I know I used to do dancing, Sunil, and that made me very persistent. So that's why I never give up, because I used to do competitions. What would you say you have taken from the police to what you do now in business? Well, first thing, uh, I'm not a good dan- dancer, so I'm really <laughs> happy that you are. That's awesome. I, I would say first thing is that, uh, um, you know, um, working hard the way we did before, uh, education the way we did before, having a high IQ that people talk, academic IQ. If you look at all these three things, these are what I was brought up with. And in reality, these are not what is needed. To become wealthy now if you have them that's awesome but i don't have them and i'm successful and i help many of my members and students do the same thing so um the skills from policing are several of them one is the focus i mean first of all the mission so you know we talk we, we hear this all the time uh you should have a goal well in, in policing there was a goal to do this we're going to go uh you know raid this place or, or whatever it is and then that was a mission. That was a basically, okay, so what is the mission? What do we want to do? So that was the goal. In business world, we have to have that. And then it was like, okay, how we're going to do this? That's the second thing. Which team members are needed? What, what people on your team are going to do what job to be able to do? Because you're not going to go by yourself, which is what a lot of unsuccessful people do. And the, th- and the last is the ability to take action when you're not ready. And that is the biggest thing that I, I would say a biggest advantage I have is that when I'm scared, you know, to put a big offer on a, on a business or something that scares me, it's going to, you know, what if I lose money or this and that. One thing that is an advantage uh, for me and that advantage for a lot of my mentees that I instilled into them is simply this. When you're scared you and, 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 and you know that you should be taking the action, uh, most people will say, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, Sunil, I'm ready, I want to do this. Yes, I want to be a millionaire. Our goal is to make 100 millionaires and multimillionaires. 
And a lot of people come to me and say, I want to be part of that list. I say, great, let's do this. Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm scared and all that stuff. Now, we are all fearful. But what police taught me is that even though you're fearful, you still do it because that's your mission. You got that mission. And, and, and completion of that mission is so important to us. So those are some of the talent that is needed for you to do that. And not that you become fearless. It's just that you have the fear. And of course, as you repeat the actions, it will become less scary. And sometimes you, you, people looking from outside think that you're fearless. Um, but reality is you're still going to have some fear if you're doing something that is bigger than what you're used to. And the main thing is go do your dream when you're scared. Because if you're not scared, chances are you're not, your dream is not big enough. And there's, it's okay for you to have small dreams, medium-sized dreams, or big uh, dreams, or, or gigantic dreams. And, and if you're following your dream, whether it's, uh, you know, for one person is small and the other person is big, it doesn't matter. It's your dream. So if you say to me, Sunil, I'm happy making $5 an hour in a certain part of the country, and it only requires me to spend $4 every day, and I'm making $5, and I don't need anything, and I'm happy, then you're successful. But my question to you, well, a lot of people when they come to me, is that they are not successful. And they're not successful from a point of they're they're, they're struggling. And, and 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 ability to take action when you're scared is very, very important. I agree with you. I know I don't let fear get in the way. But everyone does get fear. That is totally normal. But you should never let that stop you from following your goals and dreams. I remember I was petrified as well of public speaking. I created my own events on ill because no one would book me to to speak on their stages and I put myself on stage with higher profile names to launch myself as a speaker. I was really, really fearful. I was on that sh stage. My voice was shaking. I was shaking. But you just face those fears. And I always say to people, two ways to deal with fears. Either toe dipping, where you just take little steps, speak to two people, next time make it four and build up over time. Or my favourite, jump in feet first and just do it. Because when you jump in feet first and follow those fears, it just makes the, the next time you do it so much easier because you have already done it before. Now, we have got lots of people making comments here. So let me just acknowledge some people. Hello, we everybody. Have, Thank you. A, Thank you. We have a good morning, a hi, Mark. It just says Facebook user. So please type your names because sometimes we can't see them so that I can acknowledge you. We have Brenda Dempsey saying, looking great. Thank you. We have Donica Gunther saying, hi. We have Johnny... Joshua T. Berglund saying shared. Thank you for sharing and caring, Joshua. We have a Facebook user. Please let us know who it is saying money is the relationship you have with yourself is the value and worth you pay you. And we have the amazing Susan Gupta saying good morning. Hi, Susan. Thank you. Focus, systems, connections to achieve your dreams. We have another user saying, love this. An amazing chat between two awesome people. Thank you so much. I would like to know who you are, so do let us know. Hi, Jessica Lynn saying, you guys are awesome. We have Leo Ganeshan saying, hi, Sunil. Hey, Leo. Hi, Sunil. Good to see you. So, Sunil, we have heard where you have come from and the past, and we've heard a little bit about what you do now. So I just want to share a quick video with everyone to give them a kind of feel of the kind of work you're working on right now. Well, here today we have Sunil Tulsiani, founder of Private Investment Club. You need to be hanging around people like that, like him, 
so that you can learn to think and act the way millionaires act. He's an amazing friend, an amazing mentor and coach. As I said in my seminar, it ain't bragging if you've done it. What Sunil can do is can give you advice based on his own experience that will save you years of hard work. That's what his vision is, to make 100 millionaires. You need to come and be part of this and use the resources, because you're not it's not just you. You've surrounded yourself with all kinds of people in various aspects of the real estate world, the motivational world, the take-a-risk world, if you will. Yes. Sunil Tulsiani is a former police officer turned real estate mogul who has bought and sold over $100 million worth of real estate. He's been referred to by the media as the wealthy cop. Sunil is a number one best-selling author, an internationally renowned public speaker who's been featured on Fox Business News, CNBC, Bloomberg News, CP24 TV, the Toronto Star, and the covers of several national magazines. He's shared stages with Robert G. Allen, Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy, Ron Legrand, and many other real estate legends. He's been called the Tony Robbins of the real estate world. Please give a warm welcome to your speaker, Sunil Tulsiani. That's a pretty impressive CV there, Sunil, and from where you have come from to where you are now, that must make you quite proud because sometimes we don't take time to look back at our own achievements, but you must be quite humbled and proud of watching clips like that to see the greatness that you have actually achieved. I, I have to say that I, I would say that I feel extremely blessed uh, because I've seen what's on the other side. I, I've been where, uh, let's call it, slightly above the slumdog millionaire status. And, 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 and a few people have seen the slumdog millionaire is basically uh, made in India and, and, and basically just above the mud huts, you know, above that, where, where, where I grew up, and to a mansion that I live in and um, to the work that I've been able to. So it's not only what I've done for myself uh, and, and help my parents become financially free and, and, and help many, many people on, on the planet become wealthy. That is really the wealth that I uh, talk about. And, and people like uh, sharing stages with Tony Robbins and Robert Kiyosaki of the world and Grant Cardone and, 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 and some of the other thing, people that you saw, those were, if you asked me 15 years ago that I would be, like for me, I, can't, I would be sitting in the back somewhere. Like it's, that was me. Forget about being a speaker. I mean, I my, my dream has come true because uh, I realized that I'm, I have this talent of um, um, growing this for the people, for, 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 for people. You know what? When I was uh, younger, even when I was a, um, um, let's get, when I was a police officer, I heard rich people say things like, you know, I want to make a difference. I want to help people and all that stuff. And many times I really didn't understand what they really are saying. I thought they were just interested in in just growing their business and all that stuff. But now I understand what they mean by that. Because if you have something that you're good at and you can teach people that skill, uh, I think it's actually selfish for us to not spread that word than to do it. Now I, I know what that means. Whether you want to do charitable work, you know, we did 150 eye operations about uh, 12 months ago, 14 months ago in India, and helped 1,800 late uh, women in uh, in Africa and build water stations and all that kind of stuff. See, in the past life that I had, I thought somebody else should be doing that. Some rich person should be doing that. I'll just donate $10, $20 here and there when I go to temple or whatever it is. But I have to tell you what really uh, is is shocking for me is that you know what I used to make in a year, and when I started making that in a month, um, I used to be the guy who used to think that rich people were bad. Like I used to think, yet I wanted to be, but I didn't. You know, I hate I hated rich people thinking that they were bad people. 
And I have to tell you, I've met many, many rich people right now, and some of them are my good friends, and majority of them are good people. Majority of them are good people. So for you, if you are thinking you want to, uh, you know, become rich financially, and 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 you really don't want the money, then you know you can donate all that money if you want to be able to do that. So for me, what is what I'm proud of, really, um, Mark, is to be able to make a difference. And I found my purpose. That is so beautiful. Like when I was younger, or even as a police officer, even for 20 years ago. When people talk about your vision, your purpose outside of my work, I, I you know, I, I thought it was for rich people. It's not for me. But now I, I live this. Well, firstly, I won't be do donating all my money, Sonny. I like to keep some of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I would just like to add, Sonny is about collaboration. Me and Sonny have knew each other a couple of years now. He really is about serving and helping others to get there. For instance, he got me on the same stage as Jack Canfield in Toronto. He's getting me with Grant Cardone having lunch and photos when that event comes on again. Unfortunately, it was cancelled due to the pandemic. But we collaborate together, do business together and make money together. And that is what you do. Tell our listeners what's plurking, Sunil. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I was um, I, I had no idea really how I got it. I believe uh, one day I woke up and this word came to me and, and I believe in God. So uh, and I believe in God more so today than before. As I got wealthier, I understood that it's not me, it's, it's, it's something, there's a bigger force, uh, whether it's universe or whatever it is. And when I met Oprah, Oprah said that she knows that she's the most powerful wave in the ocean, but she doesn't forget that the power of the wave came from the ocean. So she's connected to the ocean. So we may be very powerful, but where is that power coming from is the issue. So for me, uh, plurking came to me, and, and 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 I don't even know why I spell it P L E R K I N G. And I'll share something with you that I shared recently on my training. And because of COVID, I'm not able to go there. But actually, got a real place called plurking for me, and it's going to be on my car. And finally, I got this. So plurking basically has become big phenomena in my community. And everybody that hears is like, man, I want to plurk for my rest of my life too. Plurking, it stands for playing and working. And when you combine it together, it's plurking. And that's basically what plurking is. And let me define that because a lot of people say to me, I plurk. And I say, okay, tell me about it. And what I find is that a lot of people who are doing um, the lot of work, and, 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 and yet they're not making the type of money that they want or they're doing the work to survive but not to thrive. Not, they don't get up in the morning and go, I'm going to go to work. I love it. On the other hand, playing, so playing and working. So playing is, is basically something you love and to make money. I now, I see on one side, that. I see on one side people say, you know what? I'm doing what I love. I'm an artist. I'm a coach. I'm a mentor. I'm a this. I'm, uh, you know, I help people. And I say to them, great. And they go, Sunil, you have no idea. I'm working. I say, great. So you're making a lot of money doing what you love, right? They go, well, you know, I, I'm not making the money yet, but I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So when I say plurking, what I mean is the best of the both world on the planet, which is I'm going to get up in the morning. I get up, Mark every day at four o'clock, 99% of the time, 4 a.m. in the morning. And I get up in the morning. I don't get up in the morning and go, oh my God, another dollar, another day. I'm going to work. No, I get up with the, with the idea I'm going to go play. I'm going to have so much fun. So plurking is something that you love to do and you are making money and, and from it. And you're making the type of money that you want. Now, whether that is $100,000 uh, 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 a year or hundred thousand pounds a month. It's what you think is what you need because the bigger you get, bigger impact you have, and you may be able to help a lot of people doing that. So please, everybody, go plurk. 
And you didn't know I was going to ask that question. You looked ever no. so prepared there with the number. No, of actually, none of your questions are from you. Didn't you didn't tell me anything? You just said we're going to do an interview. <laughs> we'll so, talk about the story. so obviously, I know all about the private investment club. So I want to go here a little bit now. Obviously, some people may think it's for real estate investors, but myself, I'm not a real estate investor. I do do crypto, gold and silver, but I do it for more of the collaboration, the networking, the joint ventures that are created, being involved in the events, getting discounts and building relationships with people. And it really has been beneficial. Sunil has made it beneficial for myself. I've gone and spoke on stage with Sunil and come off stage and earned thousands in Toronto. And I have to say as well, people might just see a businessman but Sunil is a real gentleman. When I went out to Toronto, he made me feel like a guest, took me for dinners, treated me five-star meals in the Trump, the ex-Trump Tower. Not all of this was out of what my ticket entitled, and I just want to share that you are a generous person. But can you just share, Sunil, a little bit about the Private Investment Club? Yes, uh, Private Investment Club uh, is a uh, uh, for for most uh, for real estate investors all over the world, and and that's the a primary goal of Private Investment Club. Why? Because um, I believe um, uh, the education is very very important, but the education, the current education from the people who have done it, is more important than the education that was written by some person. 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 100 years ago, and we just follow that. So it's like it's like writing about the war. The book was written about war from the from the eyes of the writer with the biases that they may have at that time. And we just follow that. And 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 throughout the years, we may not have really know what really happened. But my my point is, Private Investment Club was born because I looked at. Um, you know, going to these events. And what I found was some of the events were not interested in making their uh, members um, successful in real estate because, because it was more important for them to keep selling them advanced courses. Of course, there's an investment and I have no problem paying for the investment, but I want to do stuff. And as a former police officer, I'm like, I want to go do it. And, and then most of them said, no, I'll just you know, learn, you know, this course, and then you take the advanced course, then you take the bigger advanced course. The only two things that I say to people is this, you, you, you do something that is going to give you access to the right people, access to money, access to good deals, and learning from the right person who's doing it, who's done it, who's doing it, and who's continues to do it uh, is very important. And that's, that's okay. Now, should some people uh, hire like high end mentors and like myself and all that kind of stuff? Yes, they should, but they have to be in certain position to hire them. I mean, what I found was in, in, the, in uh, 15 years ago, they would basically take money from somebody who's starting out and sell them like $100,000 program. And, and that's, you know, and they borrowed all the money to do $100,000 and all. So I, and then even then they didn't want to help them do stuff. So I said, you know what, I'm going to open a private investment club. And now we have millionaires and multimillionaires. And, and, and you know what, it, it really gets me going because we became the top uh, real estate investing, investing club in Canada and the United States. Never in my wildest dream uh, that I thought I would do that. And it's one thing that got me there. And it's not me. What got me there is the results of the people that became members and became millionaires and multimillionaires and got their cash flow. Not everybody who becomes a, mem a member becomes that, of course, because at the end of the day, it's what you do that's going to get you there. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to help you. I might even give you access to it. Some of my members, they actually do business with me, meaning just like we're doing business together right now. But in the real estate world, you know, let's say they found a good property in London, UK or USA or Canada, whatever. And, and it's a good deal. And the next thing is that we don't have the money. Well, sometimes I do business with my members because of the relationships. So one of the things that you should do is 
um, do what I tell everybody to do at the members uh, only sessions is that you build relationships with the right people and you get access to the right people. We're talking about access to opportunity, talking about access to joint venture partners and money and all that kind of stuff. And today I tell you, Mark, which is un like it's it's just when I talk about it, I hope you guys can feel that this is not work for me. I'm I'm actually flirting right now. Like it's it's an example of what energy can come in from and the words that I'm saying right now, they're not rehearsed. There's no script for me. I am just saying, you know, my you know what and I feel very blessed because of the fortune that been built. Because I've made money, I lost money, I made it back. And 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 so um, for Private Investment Club, what I'm really, really, really blessed is that I actually got my mom and dad. Because, because my mom and dad, they were poor all along. They struggled all their lives. And now they're financially free. And, you know, Mark, when my dad retired, I thought my dad's going to die very quickly. Because he's the type of guy who had to work all the time. And a lot of people, he was the type of guy who, who would never stop working, not because he doesn't, doesn't, not because he wants to work, because he needs to work until he dies. And I was really, really, you know, fortunate that when he retired, he's financially free, never has to worry about money. And, and, and his skin, his tonality, relationship with my mom and what he does, I've never seen him before like that. And so... I am really, really um, blessed that Jack Canfield is a member of my club. Who was my mentor? Now, Jack Canfield. Brian Tracy, who was my mentor. Now he's my good friend. He's a member of my club. Robert Allen, who changed my life, he is a member of my club. Uh, Kevin Harrington of Shark Tank, he is a member of my club. And many, many amazing uh, people like yourself and so many amazing people, they're members of my club. So bottom line is private investment club is for people that want to do well in real estate and entrepreneurship, and they want to connect with wealthy investors. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you're a coach or a mentor. Uh, you have a product or service that can help a lot of people. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if um, you were a member of my club and you connected with some of my wealthy investors who then had the opportunity to grow and the ability to pay for your services. So I have people who are entrepreneurs and they just love being part of it. Why? It's the connections that are really, really, really important. It really is about building those relationships, Sunil, and Private Investment Club is all about joint ventures, collaboration, but also just the amazing events that you do so regularly. It was like we did the Jack Canfield event and it was like... At the event, well, what next? Jack Jack Canfield, huge. And then you would already launch the Grant Cardone event. You were always taking it to the next level and helping others to get there. So I really, really admire you. We are coming up to our next commercial break. Sunil has been talking all about his story, where he has come from, the, su the success he has built now. And also he has been sharing lots of tips, wisdom, and he's told us all about the Private Investment Club. So join us after the commercial break.
welcome back. We're here with Sunil Tulsiani. We have had a great show so far. We've learned all about Sunil's past, where he is now, all about the Private Investment Club. My next question, Sunil, wow, what a year. I have literally not really left the house since March last year. I was due to fly out to Canada in March last year. That all got cancelled due to the pandemic. How has this last year been for you, Sunil? And, you know, it's been difficult times for many. And how has the last year been for you? And also, how is it for real estate in general? All right. Sounds good. So um, I can tell you that uh, when this pandemic started and we got a news in March, it was literally one week before that big event with Kevin Hart, Grant Cardone, the Canadian Wealth Summit that you were coming to live. We, we basically got a notice that we can't have that. It's in a mini stadium downtown Toronto called Roy Thompson Hall. So so um, initially, it was uh, interesting and it was shocking because my entire business was uh, live events, meaning big events and, and bringing amazing people, collaborating, bringing people together and then helping them grow. And then when that happened, you know, that was interesting. But the interesting part is, and I want to say this with all the respect and, you know, I don't want you to say I'm bragging, but 2020 was actually one of the... Um, um, best years that we had because of the changes that we had to make, because the number of people we had to help and, and because of our global reach. We actually had members in Australia and UK and Africa and all of the, because of pandemic, what people did, they said, you know what, we, at least the ones that we are looking for, we're looking for entrepreneurs and real estate investors who say, you know what, we're not going to let this stop us. And what ended up happening is some of my members ended up making money in real estate because it was a pandemic. So, so my suggestion to a lot of people is this high majority of the people are actually not going to do well financially in the world of COVID-19. They've lost jobs. The business have closed down, you know, certain type of business went down and all that kind of stuff. But there are some small percentage of people they're going to make more money than they ever, ever made moving forward because of COVID-19. And so I want you to do, do one thing. Don't keep doing exactly the same way pre-COVID-19 than post and all that kind of stuff. So make the changes that needs. For example, you and I are on digital media right now, and that's a change. That's a big change for you know me. I, I'm, I'm a very um, – I'm not the best – uh, digital guy when it, you know, the internet and all. I, I know how to surf. I know how to use Facebook and I know how to do some of the social media like LinkedIn and YouTube, but I am not a technical guy. Uh, and so I said to my team, teach me enough that I need to change. And then my team needed to change to be able to uh, put up events that, uh, you know, the ones that are coming up, for example, all my big events are virtual now. And more people are benefiting from those virtual events because the way we do it is the networking still occurs. People can still do business together and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And what I'm saying to you is that real estate, uh, generally speaking, in, in uh, North America uh, and most places in the world has gone up. And it's gone up because of um, the fake economy that has been created and the fear that's there. Uh, and then low interest rates and things like that. So a lot of people are actually buying a lot of real estate. And as you know, at the last pick meeting, I talked about the upcoming crash that I'm uh, that I'm predicting um, uh, for real estate. But most people think when I say crash is coming, they're like, "Oh my God, oh, this is this is bad news." Well, it can be bad news for most people. But I'm hoping the people who are listening to the show, they're not normal, you know, regular people. They're totally abnormal, crazy people that want crazy results. So, so during the crash, some group of people make so much money. And that's what, when I, when I lost money in 2008 and the United States crashed, um, I lost it because of the crash, but I gained it back also because of the crash. I agree totally. I myself had an amazing 2020, but so many people did struggle. And I would just like to ask 
can you share just like three tips for any budding real estate investors or people in business really wanting to create something special through this year because the pandemic's not over and people are still struggling can you just share some words of wisdom to give them some light at the end of the tunnel yes the first thing if you're a real estate investor and then second is for uh, entrepreneurs and third is for people who are uh, have jobs and maybe they lost a job or they're thinking they're going to lose the job or their jobs have been reduced uh, a number of hours or pay has been cut so the first is the real estate investors for real estate investors i would say to you is this i want you to buy properties now that only are below market value and also that produce cash flow i want you to get education for it now the general education is not good enough the general education for real estate is i want to buy a house i'm going to get uh, i'm going to talk to an agent and I'm, I'm i'm going to learn about you know quickly and i'm going to put an offer in that's the general education but deeper education like the one i took the one we have uh, at private investment club is needed to know how to separate yourself from the the, the bigger number of people who are most likely going to lose versus the, the small group of people that are going to make lots of money. So education from the right people, very important, and buying properties that produce cash flow and below market value. Now most people are saying, yeah, but you know where where you know it's not it's not it doesn't exist. And it's true that ninety nine percent of the time at this point they don't exist. But it's that one percent that you need to learn how to get attract those good deals into your life. That's one. This you know next is. Please don't buy pre-construction stuff right now because most people are buying pre-construction condos, townhouses, homes, and all that stuff with only one thing in mind. One day it's going to keep going up and, 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 and it's possible that it could keep going up, but it's a big risk you're taking and most of them are buying negative cash flowing properties, knowing that it's going to be negative cash flowing property. My, my thing is to learn. Secondly, find locations, areas. Maybe it's outskirts of where you live. Maybe it's in a different city that where you live. Find it. A, a poor and middle class people only buy in their backyard. Rich people buy where the opportunities are. So become a rich person now so you can be a rich person uh, down the road. Uh, and, and know this, that when you shut down countries, when you stop telling people they can't fly, when the immigration slows down or stops completely, when the universities are not uh, taking uh, students the way they are, when businesses are closing, when job losses are there and people are not spending money, and when the government is giving away free money sometimes to help people, which is interesting, and then they reduce the interest rates for uh, mortgages, this is what is created as a, as, a, as a not real economy. And that's why the prices have keep going up because in Canada, for you know, 1.8%, 1.7% mortgage rates, 1.6% mortgage rates for five years locked in. It's like free, it's, it's even better than free money. Even the inflation, basically they're losing money if you count inflation in. So, so my suggestion to you is prepare yourself, connect with the investors right now, uh, figure out how to get access to money, like line of credits, refinancing your places, why? Because when the market crashes, the same opportunity is going to be in abundance. And the person who has access to money, access to line of credits, access to joint venture partners, access to people like who became members of my club, they're going to be able to walk in and buy properties so inexpensive as long as they are able to have cash to be able to do that. Now, it does not have to be your cash. You just need to have access to cash is the important part. So that's what I would suggest if you're doing, if you're a real estate investor, full time, part time. And also, if you are, you don't consider yourself a real estate investor, but you have your own home, you know, or you have one more property. Well, you know, if you have one more property, you're, you're a part time investor. And, and my suggestion to you is figure out what would happen if the market was to crash by 30% in your area. And, and are you going to survive? And, um, you know, I personally have sold many, many properties in Canada during this COVID-19 and made lots of money because a lot of people are just lined up to buy them. And, 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 and I want to give a vision of this. When at one time I was in India and, and there is a, you know, they sacrifice, there's a, there's a place where they sacrifice goats. It's a religious ceremony. And, and, then, and then the goat uh, 
you know, they started in the streets, they started to, to play drums and the goat had all these garland and it's dancing and having lots of fun and all that kind of stuff. And then once it got into the area, they, you know, four men grabbed the goat and then they slit the throat of that goat slowly. Um, I don't want you to be lining up around the bend to be slaughtered financially. And that's what I see with my vision. People are going and buying native cash flowing properties, hoping the prices will keep going up. So if next time you're, you're enticed to do that because of the low interest rate, fake economy and all, this is what you need to visualize. The second thing for entrepreneurship is this, do what I did, which is how do I give double the value to my clients? Um, if somebody pays you $100, you give them a $200 value. If somebody gives you $10,000, give them $20,000 value. Uh, you know, and, and figure that out, what product or services that you can either invent, or in my case, I can't invent, I'm not that smart. How about if the product and service has already been invented, but people just don't know about it, or you can tweak it a little bit, write a book, course, invent something, or get somebody to help you to do that kind of stuff. And, and, and then figure it out how to connect the two together. And one of the skills that you would have is, is to learn the skills of sales and marketing. And you simply start off by reading a book if you want, from, you know, buy it from Amazon and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and then figure it out how can you make money with them. I'm going to give you something that's going to change people's lives if they want to make immediate, like they lost a job, they don't have the money. They don't have a product. They don't have anything. They don't even have connections. They don't have anyone they can do it, deal with. What if you learn the skills of sales and you find a, a center of influence? Let's say you, you, you are a member of my club and you, and you say to me, Sunil, um, I want to help you grow your uh, you know, uh, company. I want to help you sell this book or my $500 or, or member, whatever. What happens is sometimes in the center of influences, they go out and put up the website. They go out and place ads on Facebook and spend lots of money. They find the right to, uh, person that should be a client for them. They do all the work and then basically all they do is they give you the names all those people who want to do business, let's say with me, right? Or with, with a center of influence. So basically, if you have the internet and a phone, you can actually go to any of the center of influences and say, don't have to pay me anything. You don't have to pay me anything. And, and I only want to get paid 10% of the sales that I do for you. As long as you they have the internet, they have a good product that helps a lot of people. And they are the ones who are doing all the marketing to build, to bring the people to themselves. And, and basically what they'll say is, okay, we got this, this time we got a, a thousand people that we have that want to buy this product, for example. And, and you go in and say, I will then remember, these are people who said they want to buy the product. So you're not, Cold calling, you're not knocking on doors. Oh, well, you can't knock on doors these days anyways for COVID. But the cold calls are not there. So basically, these people are saying, I want, I'm thirsty. I want the water. That's what they're saying. And your job would be to say, okay, let's figure out why you want it and help them actually close the deal by saying, okay, this is how you close. And when you close the deal, you did not have to produce the product. You did not have to uh, uh, do anything afterwards. You don't have to service the product. You didn't have to find a website. You didn't have to find a marketing budget, nothing like that. And you can start making money tomorrow, like immediately. And, and, and remember, you are not, a, uh, you're not saying to the center of influence, hey, hire me and pay me you know, this much money every month. And believe me, I'm good. No, you're saying to them, I'll do it for free. And when I sell for you, that's when you pay me. 
I agree totally. Affiliate marketing, promoting other services, products. I do a lot of affiliate marketing through Sun Hills events. They're always worth getting involved in. I want to ask you your next question, Sun Hill. We have a few minutes before the end of the show. You are launching a new event, Capital Raising Bootcamp, with Michelle Raymano and Kevin Harrington. Can you share a little bit about that, please? Yes. One of the biggest things during COVID-19 people have said is, what should I be doing? What should I be doing? And I, as I said, get access to uh, joint venture partners, get access to money, start building those relationships and get those. And yes, you can do that digitally as you meet, as you become part of the family. So so this is becoming, it's going to be the, the one of the best events um, that I'm raising because I'm, I'm producing because if you can get access to money, if you can get access to clients, because that's going to be amazing uh, clients that you get access to. So it's not just about raising money, but it's also uh, raising money from a client. So you provide something and then they give you something, they give you the money for your services. So raising capital bootcamp is mainly for how do I raise money for real estate and my my business? I have an idea. How do I do that? So we have Kevin Harrington, the original shark from Shark Tank and my good friend. Uh, he's going to be there. And I mean, you know, amazing, amazing person. And then we have Michelle Romano and she is the Canadian uh, youngest dragon from Dragon's Den. And she is, I think, worth over $200 million. And she knows how to teach you how to raise money. So uh, both of these people are going to be there teaching you as, as stars, teaching you how do you raise money in today's environment. And I have raised millions and millions and millions of dollars. I'm going to talk about that as well. And I'm going to have some of, some of the other leaders who are actually raising money right now. But the most important part, how do we get access to your money, Sunil? How do we get access to, you know, some of the millionaires and multimillionaires? How do we, not only going to learn, but then how do we get access to that? It's going to be priceless. Capitalraisingbootcamp.ca. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm giving away uh, a couple of menu tickets. And if they go to capital, uh, capitalraisingbootcamp.ca, they'll, they'll have access to that ticket. And it is on February 27th, which is a Saturday. And I, you get to spend a, a, a few hours with me, meet some of my millionaires and multimillionaires, and meet these two stars that, that it takes. Because remember, to bring these people, it's not just the money. It's actually the relationship. It's the pull, as they say. And if I didn't have a relationship with some of these people, I wouldn't be able to do and impact the world that the way I, I'm able to do. And I want you to do the same thing as you become successful. So I would love to have them. Sunil, so I'll be there. You try and stop me. Sunil, so <laughs> I really, really enjoyed having a conversation with you. Let me just check our last comment for this evening we have jessica lynn saying how cool i love that you are teaching people how to do this thank you jessica for your thank you jessica for joining us today so neil thank you so much for being on the show we've really enjoyed hearing all about your story all about private investment club where you were how you're serving others all about the capital raising boot camp thank you for being on the brilliance business show you're very welcome and i'll finish off by saying this to everybody that please you you heard this uh you, you, you heard, you know, Mark, you heard this uh, business interview. All I want you to do is I want you to listen to it again if you have to and make notes and then go do something about it. It is very. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.